Yes, yes guys, this is Nilly Last and welcome. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at those pre-order wars once again. As we know with Infinity Warfare, it has had an absolute ton of hate. It has been loathed on the trailer where it's had millions of dislikes all the way through forums and everything else like that. Everybody's been jumping on the bandwagon saying how bad this game is. Now, taking into account that no one's actually ever played the multiplayer or seen any multiplayer, it is quite surprising to a certain extent, but you know, some people, you know, are still quite agreed that there isn't boots on the ground so I can see it from both sides of the fence come to see but as we were looking back on my previous video what was shown then was the pre-order sales for Infinity Warfare of May of this year compared to Black Ops 3 of the year before now coming up on your screen is the actual um, pre-orders as you're seeing there for Infinity Warfare we had the Xbox One the PlayStation 4 around about the 30,000 mark but of the year before for Black Ops 3, we had 287,000 for the PlayStation 4 and 423,000 for the Xbox One. They are some huge, huge margins. And that is nothing that Activision would not want to get worried about. There's something that they were definitely looking at. And that is something that they knew, for me personally, what was going to actually happen. That is why they brought us Call of Duty 4 Remastered. They give us boots on the ground and they are giving us obviously some space combat along to go with it with all the movement mechanics and whatnot else so Activision did realize it before it even started and even after we've seen these particular images and heard about the pre-order sales for Infinity Warfare then came along obviously E3 now at E3 we didn't see any multiplayer whatsoever. So we haven't seen any multiplayer, only little snippets, little rumors and things like that. We've only seen little bits of the campaign. Now, for me, along with a lot of other people, I thought this is a crazy, crazy strategy. Because at the end of the day, if you're trying to sell your game and you want to get people to actually pre-order it, surely you are advertised what you're actually selling so that people will want to actually buy it. But... Activision decided along with Infinity Ward that they were not going to showcase anything whatsoever and they're going to leave it all the way up to September. Now for me personally that was a little bit of a worry, it really really was, but looking at the pre-orders now I am quite surprised about how things have been moving over time. As you're seeing it coming up on your screen now, these are the pre-orders at the moment. This is the chart that's going on at the moment uh, from basically all the stats from about two weeks ago. Now, taking into account that this is only from the United States, but they are going to make up the larger number of sales worldwide. There is no doubt about it. Due to the population and obviously where the games come from and not on that house, they will make up a large chunk of it. So this is going to give us a very good idea exactly where we are at the moment. Now, as you're seeing at the top of your screen there, we have number nine at the moment. Now, number nine is Infinity Warfare with the PlayStation 4. They are broken into the top 10 already. The number 17 is how many weeks until it's actually launched and we got 66,553 copies pre-ordered for that. Now back down into number 11 we have Infinity Warfare once again with the Xbox One which is at 62,000 copies pre-ordered. Now when we are actually comparing this game to Black, uh, sorry, Battlefield 1 because this is what seems to be the biggest competition, the biggest demise that everybody's jumping from Infinity Warfare, you know, they are, they're going to they're going to leave that game. That's a load of crap. Everybody's going to be playing Battlefield 1. Now, I've seen this in forums, columns, everything. Everybody's jumping on this kind of thing saying that no one wants to play Infinity Warfare because of the movement systems and everything else like that. But in regards to this, as you're seeing on your screen at the moment, Battlefield 1 is at number 24 and at number 26. They are literally 42,000 and even at number 26, Battlefield 1 there for the Xbox One is literally half of what it is for Infinity Warfare's pre-order sales for PlayStation 4. So, even though we haven't seen any multiplayer whatsoever for Infinity Warfare, this game is still pre-ordering quite well and it does look like it's pretty much on course to be the number one selling game of the year because if it keeps up like this and the way that it's actually looking, I have no doubt whatsoever that this will probably take the number one slot. Now, a lot of people might jump on the bandwagon saying it's because of Call of Duty 4. That could be the case. A lot of people might be just buying it just so that they can get Call of Duty 4 remastered. But at the end of the day... They're still selling Infinity Warfare with it, so it could be a very good marketing strategy from Activision. And 
no matter which way you look at it, the game is still being pre-ordered. It's still selling. And you think when the multiplayer comes along with it, that might catch a few people's eyes. And it could be shooting up in September of this year. Now, if we look forward to, um, sorry, look back to Black Ops 3. Now, Black Ops 3 sold 22 million copies in the particular year. Now, that done very, very well. That did help out Activision, obviously, compared to, like, with Advanced Warfare. But in regards to Battlefield 1 and the way that EA are looking at how their Battlefield 1 is going to be selling throughout the year. Now, EA have actually just come on board and just said they reckon that Battlefield 1 will do roughly about 15 million copies in a year. They reckon it'll be slightly under that, but around about 15. So if Infinity Warfare can get just underneath a Black Ops 3... They will outsell Black Ops, uh, sorry, Battlefield 1. And a lot of people will still be playing online. I think, you know, I know a lot of people will be saying they'll be playing Call of Duty 4. But I think a lot of people will still be playing online with Infinity Warfare as well as Call of Duty 4. So I don't see this big shift from Battlefield, uh, sorry, from Call of Duty over to Battlefield 1 just because we've got the movement systems in Infinity Warfare. Can't see it at all. It does look the pre-order sales are starting to pick up. And obviously we haven't seen any multiplayer whatsoever, like I said before. Once that comes about, I would imagine that these will grow in strength even more. And there would be no surprise to me whatsoever that once we get closer to the date, this will be taking number one spot along with the sales for the year. And, you know, if we look at Activision as a company, they always seem to get away with it. Now... I thought that maybe they would be struggling just a little bit, but like I said in my previous video, they always know how to pull it out of the bag, they know how to get away with it to a certain degree, and I think that this time, once we get past this movement system, they'll be going back to boots on the ground, and they'll still be at number one again in 2017. There is no doubt about it whatsoever. But anyway, there guys, I just thought I'd leave you a little rundown just to let you know how these pre-order wars are going, just to put things to rest on certain arguments and what else that I keep reading about and what else all the time. But anyway guys, leave it in the comment section below exactly what you're thinking about this and whether or not you've actually pre-ordered Infinity Warfare or whether you are one of the people that are going to still be sticking with Battlefield 1. But anyway guys, leave it all in the comment section below. But coming up on my screen now is my subscribe button. Make sure you're jumping on that and guys, if you can drop a like for me, it'd be absolutely fantastic. This is Nidhi Nassanoff. Catch you later.